Hey guys, here we have a switch that's used to turn off the gas furnace at the top of the basement stairs. And problem having is that it arcs when it turns on and off. You can see that little bit of spark and that arc in there. So that switch needs to be replaced. I'm going to go through the process of showing you guys what you need to do. First you're going to want an AC voltage detector, such like this. Hit that button, make sure you got a battery in there. Obviously test it on a source that you know electricity would be turned on to verify it's working. And then you're going to... So both terminals are now hot. So if I take this switch, turn it off, I got one that's beeping, one that's not. So I know this is my hotline. So here is my breaker box. I have it labeled furnace, 15 amps. I'm going to power that off or switch it off. Now with the furnace breaker turned off, you want to retest and make sure their AC voltage detector is detecting no voltage. As verifying you flipped off the correct breaker. Next you're going to unscrew the top and bottom screws after you take the plate off obviously. Then you're going to take this switch Pull it outward to expose the wires. In this case, I have a metal box which is acting as my ground, and my hot. And now you're going to probably should do this first, but loosen up these screws. So you're going to take off the wires from the terminals. You remember which is which. This is the hot. So if I'm reading this correctly, this says it's a 5 amp at 250 volts or 10 amp at 125 volts. Uh, this is an old, I guess, P and S switch. On the rear of this, it says P1243U. See that in the lighting? All right. This thing's pretty dated. About time to replace it. I'm replacing the switch with this new 20 amp lit switch um, from Leviton. So you're going to take your line, your hot, attach it to the bottom, loop it around. If you're using a straight wire, this actually comes out and you can stick the wire behind here and then tighten it down. In this case, I'm looping it with the rotation of the screw because as you tighten this down, you don't want it to be the opposite, especially if it's... Uh, uh, Stranded and not solid. And this goes around here. Go ahead and take your Phillips head screwdriver. Down to get a nice solid connector. Just do a loose, snug, tight, and then now you really want to snug it down. Make sure these are not loose at all because you'll get it. an arc or potentially a fire if you have loose connectors. So in my case, um, they put the box in, put the sheet rock on top, but don't have a nice square hole. This switch is a little bit larger than the previous switch I need to knock out the sheet rock. So now you can see I got a nice rectangle box or cutout of the sheetrock. Now I'm going to try and push this into place. And I got plenty of room around the exterior of this switch. Oh, the last thing is if you don't use the actual grounding screw, you should probably screw this in 
Um, in my case, my box is metal and that's grounding the switch. But if you had a more modern house, you would likely have a copper wire, which would probably be just raw copper. And that would be where you would tighten your grounding wire. Start by tightening top and bottom screws. Make sure the orientation of your switch is correct. You want the uh, switch going down to be off. All right, switch is installed. So the box pulled out a little unfortunately and cracked a little bit of sheetrock. And now you just got to put your cover back on, you're all set. So turn your breaker. In this case, I have a lighted switch so you can see the little switch is now lit and it is now on and off. So now I'm in business and I can, if I didn't have a lighted switch, I can reuse the voltage tester. And that is how to change a switch that needs to be replaced, whether it be arcing or not. Hope this is helpful, guys. Thanks.